Hi you guys, this is section 8.1 which is zero and negative exponents and we'll also uh, be evaluating with the negative exponents. So I wanted to do a quick review and then I'll show you how to do it. Uh, whenever you have a term like this or a monomial, the exponent is red, the base is only what's in front of the exponent and then the coefficient is the number in front of it. So the only thing that goes to the exponent in this case is the base, whatever's in front of it. Okay, and you'll see what I mean when I get um, to more complex numbers. So x to the 0. This is your base to the 0 that equals to 1. Okay, a number can also go to the 0. So if 5 is my base, um, the coefficient is the number, but a, the base can also be a number. So 5 to the 0, that's also 1. And if I have a million to the 0, that's also 1. Because this whole thing is your base to the 0 power. This is your base and this is your base. Okay, so here's some more examples. 4 to the 0, this is my base, so that's going to equal to 1. In this case, 4 is my green. That goes to the 0. And I'm left with this negative 1. So this becomes 1. So it's, the answer would be negative and then 1. Okay. When I have parentheses, this whole thing is my base. The whole negative 4 in parentheses is my base. So that all goes to the 0 power. So that's going to equal to 1. Same thing here as I did above here. This whole thing to the 0 power is 1, but I'm left with this negative on the outside. So my answer is going to be negative 1. Okay, on this one, x to the 0, that's my base of my exponent. So I leave the 4, so it's like saying 4 times 1, which is equal to 4. And in this case, x to the 0 power again. So it's negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4. Okay, on this one, y is my 0, 4 is the coefficient, but x, because it's not to the 0 power, just stays, it's like saying 4 times x times 1, which is just equal to 4x. Okay, so whatever goes to the 0 power becomes 1, only that base. Everything else stays the same. Okay, now we're going to negative exponents. So I have a few examples here, and then I'll show you how to simplify it after. x to the negative 1, the most common problem. That, or mistake that people make, x to the negative 1 is not equal to negative x. That's wrong, okay? x to the negative 1, you have to think of it as upstairs, downstairs. So if I think of it as a fraction, upstairs, downstairs, if it's negative exponent on the top, when you drop it down to the bottom, it becomes positive. So when I take this to the negative 1 and I move it downstairs, first of all, there's invisible 1 up here. So i got to leave something on the top. I can't leave it blank. So I need to leave the 1 on the top, and when I move x to the bottom, it becomes x to the positive 1 power. Okay, negative 1 power becomes positive 1 on the top, and then to simplify, you drop off the 1 power, so just 1 over, yeah, 1 over x. Okay, so same thing with this one. If you want to put an invisible one in here, that's fine. You circle the, the base with the negative exponent, and you move it down. So you leave 1 on the top, and now x... If it's negative 2 on the top, it becomes positive 2 on the bottom. So it just becomes x to the positive 2. Okay, And you can see the next one is just going to be, if I move it down, if this is x to the positive 1, positive 2, this would be 1 over x to the positive 3. So negative 3 on the top becomes positive 3 on the bottom, and vice versa. So if you ever have a negative on the bottom exponent, when you move it up, it will become positive. So over here, I have the same thing. So instead of x to the negative 1, I have 3 to the negative 1. So I just change the base to a number. So when I put it over 1 and I move it down, I get 1 over 3 to the 1 power, or just 1 third. Okay. When I move this one down, I put it over 1 again. See, I'm making fractions. Move it down. It becomes 1 over 3 squared. But whenever you have a variable, you can leave it. But when you have a number as 3 squared, I have to multiply it out. So it becomes 1 over 9. This one, I just do the same thing that I did here. So if it's 1 over x to the positive 3, this one, when I move it down, would be 1 over 3 to the positive 3, which is 1 over 27. Okay? So this one here, now we're going to do a little bit different. So you can see I have the same thing, same problems, except over here I have x, over here I have a 3, x, 3. I'm just replacing, substituting, just so you can see that it works with numbers and variables. In this case, when I do this, 
All I want to circle is the base with the negative exponent. So notice I did not circle the negative. Okay. So when I do that and I move this one down, I leave the negative one on top over x to the 1 power. So the negative stays on top with the 1. And then the x goes down to a positive 1 power. If you want to see it with a positive 1, that's fine. And it becomes negative 1 over x. Over here, when I circle, I only circle the x to the negative 2. I leave the negative. I'm going to move it down. So I leave a negative 1 on the top. And it becomes x to the positive 2 on the bottom. On this one, I'm going to take the whole thing and move it down. Because it's all in parentheses. And I'm left with a 1 over. And if you notice, I left the parentheses. Make sure you leave the parentheses when you move it down. If there's parentheses on the top, make sure you do that. And you'll see why when we go to the next problem over here. Okay, so this one I circle it a 3 to the negative 1. I leave the negative 1 on top because I didn't circle it to move. And it becomes 3 to the 1 power over 3. So it's negative 1 over 3. And sorry, I can see that there's a glare, so I'll switch the lights. On the next po problem, I'm going to circle the 3 to the negative 2. So I'm going to circle this. And again, notice I didn't circle the negative up here, so it stays on there. It becomes 3 squared, negative 1 over 9. So this is the one I want you to see, the difference between these two problems. Okay. So when I do this and I move it down, I got 1 over, and if I put negative 3 to the positive 2 like that without parentheses, I'm going to end up with a 1 over negative 9. But that's wrong because there's parentheses here, so I need to leave the parentheses here, which means that it becomes positive 1 over 9. So you can compare this one to this one. This one was a negative, this one becomes positive all because of the parentheses. Okay, so here's how we simplify when we have negative exponents. What you want to do, and I, I color coded them for you, is look for the exponents that have zero or negatives. Look for the zero or negative exponents, okay? Um, and sorry, I should have um, changed this one. This one should have stayed purple. This one should have stayed purple. And this one should have stayed purple. Okay. So all I want to do is look for the ones with a 0 and negative, and I want to move those down or, or get rid of them. x to the 0 becomes 1. So you can get rid of it like that, or you can just cross it out. So like if you see it here, when we do this, you can just cross it out. Your choice. Okay. When you have y to the negative 1, you just circle the 1 with the negative, and you move it down. When you rewrite it, think of it as a fraction. Whatever you did not circle stays. So if there's negative 3 on the top, you leave the negative 3 on the top. If z to the fourth is uncircled on the top, leave it as z to the fourth on the top. Okay. So whatever you did not circle stays. And now I'm going to move down the y to the negative 1 for a y. And there's my answer. Okay. On this one, the 0 poofs out or becomes 1. Okay. I'm going to... Circle, this is the only one I circled. If you notice, the only one I circled up here, the only ones I circled was the one to the zero power and negative power. Okay, so I crossed out the zero, circled the negative. I'm going to move it down. When I rewrite my fraction, notice my line goes straight across. Leave whatever's on the top, so it becomes 4 squared, which is 16. And I can leave the y to the fourth on the top. And then I'm moving down x to the positive 3. So just so you can see it visually, the 4 squared became the 16, and then the y to the 4th stayed on the top. So you can see those stayed on the top, and then the x to the 3rd moved to the bottom down here. Okay, so here's another one. What if the 5 has a negative 2? Okay, I just circle that one, and I'm going to move it down. Circle this one, and move it down. Right? Write whatever I did not circle, so a to the fourth, c over 5 squared, b to the positive 8. So it becomes 5 to the positive 2 on the bottom, b to the positive 8 on the bottom. And now I need to multiply the 5 squared out. So it becomes 
a to the fourth c over 25 b to the eighth. Okay? And there's your answer. So this is your answer here, and this is your answer here. Here's a few more um, problems for simplifying. Again, I, I put the negative and zero exponents in red so you can know to move them. If they already give it to you as a fraction, then you don't have to put it over one or make another fraction. They already have it in a, as a fraction form. So all you need to do is circle and move. So again, the six and the y stays because they didn't move. And now the only thing I moved down is your x squared. Okay? But now you need to put it in alphabetical order. So it becomes x squared y. Okay, put it into alphabetical order. If there's a number that goes in the front. Okay, the only thing I circle on this one is this. So I'm going to leave the negative 7x on the top. I'm going to leave the 8z to the fourth on the bottom. And the only thing I move down is the y cubed. And I left a space because um, alphabetical, I know. That's going to move down, and I'll do it in red just so you can kind of see. It becomes y to the third power. And I'll move this colored code this way. So the only thing you move down was x squared. Okay, and there's your answer. Here's another one. This one I can poof out. That becomes 1. And then this one I'm going to move up. So when I go this way, 8y stays on the top, 10 stays on the bottom, and but now I'm going to move up z to the third. Okay. So the 8 and the y stayed, the 10 stayed. But now I need to simplify one more thing. If you notice, the 8 and the 10 can break down to 4 over 5. So make sure you simplify that as well. So 4y z to the third over 5. Okay. And here's one more last one. I'm going to circle this one and move it down. I'm going to cross this one out. And I'm going to circle this one and move it up. Okay. And I'm going to simplify the 9 and the 12 now. Well, actually, I'll do it after like I did before. So I'm going to copy down the 9y to the 5th. And I'm going to copy the 12a to the 3rd. Okay. I'm going to move down x to the fourth moves down so it becomes x to the fourth here and I'm going to move c squared up so it becomes c to the positive two there. Okay, so that's the only two things I moved the b to the zero crossed out because it became zero. I'm going to simplify this if I divide by three I get three over four and I'm going to put it into alphabetical order up here so I need to move those so it becomes three c squared y to the fifth over four a third x to the fourth. Okay, I gave you a lot of examples so you can kind of see all the different types. Uh, if you're moving, so you can move them up, you can move them down. So negative on the bottom becomes positive on the top exponents. Negative on the top becomes positive on the bottom as well. So same thing, just think upstairs, upstairs, downstairs. Okay, evaluating. So if I have x equals 3 and y equals negative 2, the first rule of thumb, always use parentheses when you substitute. Okay, so if I simplify this first, if I put this over 1, this is gone, this moves down, I'm left with x cubed over y squared. And now I want to substitute my numbers in. So if I do this, I put 3 cubed over negative 2 squared. 3 cubed is 27. Negative 2 in parentheses is negative 2 times negative 2, so that equals to 4. And your answer, you can, since it's simplified, you can leave it like that. If you want to change it to a mixed number, you can. So here's another one. The only thing I move down is this one. So I'm left with negative 2 y squared over x squared. Okay. So the x squared moved down to here. Now when I rewrite it, I go negative 2 times negative 2 squared all over 3 squared. 
Remember PEMDAS now. Don't, don't try to multiply this and get 4. That's wrong. So PEMDAS, I want to do this one first. So I'm going to go negative 2 times 4. This is equal to 4. All over 9. So it becomes equals to negative 8 over 9. Okay, so that's how you do those in evaluating. Um, I know when I taught this before, they wanted more practice and all that. So here's a couple of practice problems for you to try before the test, if you want, or before quizzes. So go ahead and copy these down. Pause and try and solve them on your own. And then see if you, can, if you got it right, because I'm going to solve it now. So go ahead and copy it down. And then hit pause. And then I will solve them for you. Okay, so hopefully you got these correct. Here's how you solve them. This becomes zero. I circle this and I circle this one. So I'm gonna move this one up, move this one down. I get, and I'm gonna simplify this to one over two. So I get x squared on the top. I got two a to the fifth on the bottom. I'm gonna move down y cubed. I'm gonna move up. And I'm going to move up the b squared. I just moved it over so it's alphabetical. And there's your answer. Okay. Here's the next one over here. I'm going to simplify this one to a 3 over 1. I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to move this one down. I'm going to move this one up. So I'm going to get 3 y to the fifth. And on the bottom, I'm going to get b cubed c, oops, sorry, color coding it wrong, b cubed c, and then when I move it down, when I move this down, it becomes z to the fourth, and when I move this up, it becomes e to the first, and there's your answer. Okay, hope this helps. I know this is a little long.